did you know that food prices are up these days? Last night I went into one of those uh, fried chicken place and spent five bucks for a wing and a drumstick. That's the first time I ever spent an arm and a leg for an, an arm and a leg. <laughs> and I, then I went into a, the bakery to get some bread. I was looking for some pumpernickel bread. And due to inflation, you know what? All they had now is a pumper dime. <laughs> they even charge $10 a pound for the ribs. Boy, I'm telling you, I won't buy them even if they were attached to Dolly Parton. <laughs> Speaking of high food prices, well, there's a place in Singapore that gives you value for your dinner, but at a regal price. This is the Marina Mandarin Hotel in Singapore. It looks like any other elegant five-star hotel. But inside, there's a spectacular design that is so awesome. It looks like something come from the movie 2001. There is a gastronomical feast which takes place in this hotel. People pay thousands of dollars just for the privilege of eating here. Everything is very elegant, it's very regal. Taking the elevator to the top is one sure way of moving up in the world. They guarantee you eat like an emperor. The only trouble is that you have to dress up like one. Your Imperial Majesty, this is the feast for you. First dish is Pearl of Orient. The second is Gates of Heaven. The third is Imperial Splendor. All the splendor and traditions of Chinese emperors are recreated here for this special evening. It is easy to imagine for a moment that you're eating back in the time of the real Chinese imperial banquet. Dishes that are refined and delicate as a masterpiece of Chinese painting are gracefully served while the emperor has one tough job to do. Choose what he wants to eat. Well, it's a tough decision, but somebody has got to do it. Being the emperor, you get the best pieces and you get the best service. Now this looks like a tuna fish sandwich. No, it is from the Peking duck. Where's Donald? A meal like this is truly fit for an emperor. But if he eats like this every day, he will become as big as a Buddha. Right. Well, if you eat like that, you become the emperor. And you might grow so big, you know, because that was a 12-course dinner that I had. And afterward, they have the entertainment, the fan dance and everything to go with it. Well, let's get down to business. I can hardly wait to find out what kind of apron saying that I have today. Okay, let's find out. <laughs> right. Well, that's good. I'm ready. I'm not lost at all. See, there you are. And today, because of the emperor feast that I had in Singapore, I am going to cook up a dish, or create a dish called the Mandarin Beef. The whole thing is very interesting because we are going to combine the beef and the tangerine, the skin of the tangerine orange. You know, usually it was dry and now I soak it in the hot water and become soft again and make it good. Now this is the beef and then I'm going to show you how to use the egg and make some nice decoration for your cooking. It's a lot of fun. You see, cooking in a wok is the way to go. And in this show, I show you two dishes and that will satisfy you for life. And I'm sure you enjoy it. <laughs> now, here's the beef that I'll be using and also the egg. Now, take a look at the beef. This is the flank steaks. Now, beef, should be firm and fine grain with a minimum amount of fat around the edge 
and that's it. You know, you don't you don't want the fat because uh, you know they, they don't taste good and give you a lot of a cholesterol. Okay, get the lean one. Now the the reason why I picked the flank steak because you can see the grain going up and down. Okay, and then you want to slice it across the grain, and that's the reason. And I'm going to be using some ginger root, and uh, carrot, and uh, green onion, and some green pepper. You know all those things together. All right. Now, let's get down to business and show you how to slice the beef. Oh, okay. Now get a knife here. And uh, okay, if you want to sharpen your knife, no problem. Just get the rough bottom edge of a china plate and then do it like this. Okay, now always doing this way and sharpen it up and then the whole thing is ready. You don't even need a sharpening stone. Okay, now all you have to do now, just slice it across the grain. Now make sure you hold your cleaver properly, two finger here and a thumb here. And always leave the corner of the knife down. Okay, now there you are. And then just uh, as long as it stays down like that, then you never cut yourself. Otherwise, if you don't hold it you know, properly, you are in trouble. See, now you, you, you hold it this way, you know, this is, a lot of people, they hold it and then slippery. And then they have no idea, they might cut themselves, you know, like this, huh? You know, then trip, you know, they're short of one finger, you know? <laughs> see? Like this. Ah, oh, see? There's a one thumb, you know, gone. <laughs> oh, stick it back together. <laughs> anyway, that was a little trick. Okay, you have to put all those things and cut all the beef, you know, right here. And get it. And, uh, and slice it at the thickness about... Uh, one eighth of an inch. You know, that's all you have to do. Now, okay, now cut it up. If the meat is half frozen, that would make the slicing even much easier. Okay, now you do it like that. And now there you go. And then you get some of this uh, carrot. Okay, now carrot, you know, right here. And I want to show you, okay, a good way, you know, to uh, get your carrot. All right, if you want to make it uh, even more interesting, and you know, all you have to do, just uh, uh, get your carrot, you know, uh, in the shape, you know, like this, huh? Okay, now cut into a little square. You know, okay, now just like that. Okay, then you can do a little cutting, now like this, one here. Oops, still moving. Uh-huh, now, so just go like that. Okay, one part is gone, you turn around, you go to the other part. Okay, keep your finger away from it. Now, now you just keep doing like this. Now, then it's gone. Then you turn it around. Oh, there you are. Okay, then you go to this side. Away you go. And then you can turn around here. Just keep doing this until four sides are done. Okay, now then we'll make a nice pattern. And then people will appreciate your cooking more. Oh, now this one, no problem. Then. You just keep on doing this, no, all right. like that, and then there. Okay, and then go like this. Now what the heck? Uh huh. All right. Now then you get this, you know, together, and then you just cut this, you know. There you are. You got a little pattern from your carrot. Okay. Then you get some of this uh, dry. Mandarin skin, cut it up. Now, the reason why I use the tangerine orange you know, skin is that it does give you a nice little tangy uh, flavor and very unique. And uh, you should try that. And uh, it's very tasty. We use it a lot in China to cook beef and uh, particularly on beef because some, they have this, for some reason, they can mix up so well you know, with the beef and work out really well with the beef. All right, now then what do we do? Then all you have to do now is to get some, um, oh, okay, get some uh, green onion, you know, cut it into one, one inch length, like that. And then get some uh, ginger root. Ginger root so that you can, you know, really bring up your circulation. You see, when your circulation is up, it would increase your appetite, hopefully. Okay, your circulation is up, you get mad too. You will sweat. Okay, there you are, you get that. And then you get an egg, get an egg and get a little uh, bowl here for your egg. Okay, now then all you have to do now, 
Just uh, get a uh, chopstick, a pair of chopstick, and then beat it up. Okay, now just like that. All right, then we are almost ready. All you have to do is just walk over to the hot oil. Now this is the step number one we have to do. Get a plate and then get to the hot oil. Now watch this carefully. Get a uh, little fishing net. Now oil your fishing net a little bit. Now make sure it's hot. And then watch this very carefully. Now you put your egg, you know, right there. Now then the egg is done. See now, then you just fix it up, pick up all the egg. Now there you are. Okay, don't burn them. Now see, there you are. Beautiful. Now, what? then you might wonder, what the heck is this? Now, what are you going to do with this? Well, this is to be used for garnishing. Now, now, put a little bit more, cook it so that you can expand a little bit more. Ah, this is the way to expand your budget. Huh, <laughs> that's right. Now, then what you do is walk over here and get your beef, you know, put it, I mean your egg. Now, just put it away and then spread it and then make sure they go to the side. Okay, and then later on, we're going to use it as part of the decoration. Now, see, the, yeah, quick way to make your egg, you know, right this. Then, what do you do? Then you put all the beef into the hot oil. Right. Now, then you will be, then you're ready. Ha, huh. very easily. Okay, now, that doesn't take long. Then you just get your two tablespoons of oil here and get all the vegetables to this wok. Get a little bit, half teaspoonful of minced garlic. Okay, then you get the fishing net and then get all the beef. Okay, pick it up, walk over here and go over the other side. Nah, no problem. Now see how easy it is. Aha! Uh -huh. Then you get some Chinese cooking wine, of course. Aha, uh -huh. make it up like this, eh? Now, see? And then you use a little bit oyster flavor sauce. One tablespoonful of oyster flavor sauce. And then some uh, sugar. All right. And then just mix this. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, the, don't forget to get a little bit star solution. Okay, star solution. Using half teaspoonful of this starch to one tablespoon of water and then few drops of sesame seed oil. Now this is really fit for the emperor, the mandarin, you know, to eat this. Okay, now just mix this. And then away you go, you know, there you are. You just bring it to a boil. Then your mandarin beef, you know, is ready. Now, okay, now mix them. Oh, they taste so good. If you like it hot, you can put a little bit of pepper. Or you want it hotter, you can put some uh, Tabasco sauce. If you want it what, even hotter than that, get some firework in your beef. <laughs> what the heck? Now, all right, that's ready. And I'm going to come back to do another dish, not so hot, but it's called the honey chicken. I'll be coming back after these messages. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited now. You can see, I am going to make up something more interesting than the Mandarin beef. I will be cooking the chicken with honey and pineapple. But before I do that, I'd like to show you a little special carving. All right, so that you can uh, enjoy your dish more. Now, this is a regular tiny team. Uh, tomato. Okay, now just uh, make sure you get one that's not too ripe. And then make a little crease cut. All right, and meet at the bottom of it, like that. Okay, then all you have to do is just uh, use a little sharp paring knife and then lift up, shave off, you know, like this. Huh? Just lift it up, just in immediately underneath the skin. Okay, now, very interesting. And you will love this. And uh, just go like that. Now, and then you go to the other side. Just do all the four sides. Okay, now. Very interesting. Now, just put it like that. And then you go to the other one. Just keep going. Repeat it. Just make sure you do this, what we call the back and forth uh, action. Okay, now just go back and forth. Just like that. 
and uh, you won't cut yourself. The whole technique depends on how you hold your knife, you know, really. You notice that I always have this two finger here to guard the knife so that it won't go too far. And uh, using the back and forth action, that's all you have to do. Now, after you finish with the four side, just peel them back, just like that. One, two, three, four. Now, a special flower, and then you just uh, make some score, you know, on this, and then you will stay uh, kind of bent back, and it will look really exciting if you put some of the green uh, parsley, you know, next to it. Excuse me, Elvis, this parsley has a name called the Elvis. <laughs> now, just put it right there. Here is a tomato flower, just for you. Okay, now we are ready to cook this. And all we need just roughly around eight ounces of uh, chicken meat. Okay, now there you are. Actually, you, I only have six. But you can put the eight or ten or fourteen ounces, doesn't matter. I slice it very thin so that it won't take too long, you know, to cook. Okay, now there you are. All you need just get this thing organized. Get a little bit of the ginger root, few slices. And send some uh, green onion, cut it up into small pieces like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, there you are. You just mix this, and then you're ready. Oh, then all you have to do now is just uh, get uh, some uh, oil, you know, two tablespoons of oil here from the wok, and then heat it up. Make sure it's hot. And then all you have to do is just put all the chicken in. Okay, now let it cook until they change color. Takes about a minute to do so. Okay, now you see? Now that's all you have to do. And then while you're waiting, you make a little bit of uh, solution. Okay, star solution by dissolving one tablespoonful of starch to one tablespoonful of water. And then you put a little bit of uh, pepper. Okay, a little bit of the soy sauce, light soy sauce. And then a few drops of sesame seed oil. Okay, that's all you need. Okay, now then you get yourself ready. And then, then you put the ginger, onion, put it in, you know, right here. And let it cook. Oh boy, that was fast. Now, then you put all the green pepper and red pepper. Oh, to brighten it up. Okay, and then the pineapple, of course. Now, there you are about a quarter of a cup of chunk, chunky, chunky pineapple. All right, then put a little bit of salt, about half teaspoonful. And then you put some of the honey, one to two tablespoonful of honey. All right, get your honey in. Okay, and then you mix this thing up. Oh, looks good already. Now all you have to do now, just get your sauce and put it in and then bring it to a boil. Now, earlier I showed you how to make those carving. However, if you are too lazy to carve it yourself, then in uh, Southeast Asia, there is a fruit called the uh, star fruit. You look at this. This, is one, this one looks like a star. See? Five star, you know, right here. And all you have to do, just put it on. Now, that becomes instant carving. If you don't like it, you can use it even for your earring, you know, right here. Now, you see? Look at this, you know, just, just terrific, you know, like this, yeah? <laughs> this is the star fruit. What the heck? You mix it up, then, then we're ready. We get our plate. Okay, I'm excited. Now, there you are. And I put this uh, nice little flower here and put all the star, you know, five star. This is a five star cooking. How about that? Now, then you just... Do it like that and get all your honey pineapple chicken just right here. And when I come back, I'm going to share this with my special guest. Now, don't walk away. I'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back. And there I have two special dishes for you. This is the Mandarin beef, specially made. I even carved a dragon and a phoenix, the symbol of supremacy and also the emperor. Now, the next one, this is really, this, this really deserves five stars.
performance. It's the chicken with the pineapple and honey, just for you. I hope you like it. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Oh, you look great. Thank you. The way you sit down just like the emperor. <laughs> huh? You feel like being the emperor or Mandarin? Um, I feel like eating. <laughs> you like viewing? Oh, really? Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Use your chopstick. Are you good with chopstick? No, I'm not good with chopstick. So what are you good for anyway? <laughs> I'm not sure. Skiing? <laughs> skiing, yes. I'm yeah, skiing. I can see you all dressed up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm sure everybody's good for something. Uh, let's have some chicken here. Huh? Use your chopstick. Uh, you're not very good with chopstick. Are you not very good with chopstick? Then you can use mine now, okay? The way to use it is just press the, the, the thumb down, okay? Mm. And then you just, uh, only one, okay? Now just pick it up like that. Okay. See? Now, there you are! Instant yeah. success! Hey, you left a big hand for Tommy! <laughs> good! Very good. Now, let me read my fortune cookie, huh? All right, it says, Wu Zheng Nan Ming. It means you can't clap with one single hand. The meaning is this, the lonely man has no power. You need everybody to help you out. Right? Make sense? Right. Okay, go ahead. How do you like the chicken? I love it. It's Tender? good. It's delicious. Delicious. Now, let's mm. try the beef, huh? And see what happens. Thank All you. right? Just use the, the thumb. Yeah, or one part. That's it. Now, see? <laughs> now, you get to keep my ch special chopstick, too, when you walk home. All right? Mm. Now, I'll let you struggle more. Okay, Tommy, <laughs> it's good for your skiing, all right? And you go ahead and enjoy it, all right? And the folks at home, I hope you enjoy it too because uh, we are going to be walking more dishes for you. And bye-bye and see you next time. terrible mood. You see, I was out with a friend of mine and he was walking across the street. Today, a step on the sidewalk, he came face to face with a policeman and uh, who began to write him a ticket for jaywalking. See, he used to do that. Now he got caught. My friend was very upset. He said, jaywalking? You can't write me a ticket for jaywalking. Well, if you want to be technical about it, I wasn't walking, I was running. <laughs> the policeman said, well, if you want to be so technical, I'm not writing, I am printing. <laughs> In Singapore, like many other countries, jaywalking is illegal and carries a large fine. But when I was there, Find a far more pleasant way of seeing the sight. There's a very unique experience in Singapore. When you travel, you can travel in the real Mercedes or you can travel in the Singapore version of Mercedes. Today I get lucky. I get to travel in this tri show with Miss Tourism Singapore, Miss Tang Lai Kim. And we are going to have a moving experience. Right? Okay, here we go. The tri-shaw is actually the updated version of the rickshaw, very unique in Singapore. It is a lot faster, but it's not fast enough to use in hectic cities like Los Angeles. Riding a tri-shaw is a very pleasant way to see all of the scenery. Not only do you get an unobstructed view of everything, you also get free air conditioning. It is nice to know that you can relax and let someone else do the driving, or should I say, paddling? Singapore is a city of contrast, full of old and the new. 
There's so much going on in Singapore, you can spend all day to finish your sightseeing. But if you need exercise, you can always trade places with the driver. This driver was very nervous and kept holding on my handlebar to make sure I walked straight. This is the statue of Sir Stamford Raffles, and this is the historical site. This is where he first landed. He is the man responsible for turning Singapore from a seaport into a modern metropolis. This is a clean, exciting city. Even though it is very cosmopolitan, it still tries to hang on to its past. The shop houses along the river are slowly being restored. One part of Singapore is not only old and full of the past. It is also very British, a taste of old England in the tropics. Between the city's skyscraper, you also find double-decker buses making scheduled stops throughout the city. Singapore is one of the world's busiest seaports, with a bustling harbour filled with freighter, which brings goods from all over the world. This is not the place for a small boat, for sure. But near the harbour, there's another part of the Singapore's unique history. That's the symbol of Singapore, the Malayan. It has the head of a lion and the tail of a fish. And there's a great story behind it. You see, a long time ago, Singapore was actually a fishing village. And as a result, you have the tail of a fish. And also a long time ago, there was a prince from Palambang who was washed ashore and he saw this beautiful creature which he thought was a lion. And he was so taken in by the beauty that he decided to call this place Singapura, which actually means Lion City. So if you put the histor two historical facts together, you get the Malayan. Singapore is also a melting pot and the perfect place to see many different people and cultures like the Chinese who first set up their shop houses here. You can also have a taste of India in the form of temple like this one or in the fortune teller in the street. Everything is exotic and spicy. One group called the Peranican are a blend of Chinese and Malay. Their buildings are a combination of Italian and European. Another culture that finds its home here in Singapore is the Arabian population. If you are hungry, you may want to try an Arabian specialty called mutabak. It is not only good for your stomach, but also it's quite an eye-catching experience. This is an Arabian pizza. Instead of using tomato and cheese, they use a lot of mutton and a lot of onion. It tastes okay, but the only trouble is that makes it very difficult to talk to you the day afterwards. That's right, too much onion will spoil your day. That's right. Yeah, I was told that Singapore is one of the small dragons in the Far East, you know, because they respect that country so well that self-sufficient is one of the most favorite uh, tourist spots in Southeast Asia. Well, by the way, now talking about jaywalking, and I have a special apron for you. I hope you enjoy this. There you are. Look at it. 101 way to walk your dog. Okay, we are going to do two dishes. One is a new dish I have never done before. You see, in Singapore, there's a more or less a melting pot of different ethnic racial people living together. You have the Indian and then you have the Arabian. You know, a lot of Arabian, they don't eat pork. So they cannot order sweet and sour pork. So I make up a, a dish called the sweet and sour lamb. See? So everybody can eat. So that's one of my concoction of the, all the recipe and make it up to make everybody happy. And another dish I will be cooking is the rock cod. Oh, the famous rock cod fish that will be done with a creamy corn sauce, you know? And it would be exciting and all you have to do is just watch me and you have lots and lots of fun.
Now I have a fish here. This is called a rock cod. Now, I, before I start walking, I'd like to say a few words about this rock cod. Now, this is a cod family, and when you buy a fish, make sure you have to look at a few things to make sure it's fresh. Now, number one, you check the eye, make sure the eyeball is still shiny, it's nice, and not wearing any contact lens or spectacles. <laughs> That's right. And then you press the meat here. It ha this should be firm to touch. Okay, now very firm. And then you lift up here. Normally you will see a little the gill. You know, uh, they're red in color. If they are they are brown in color, that means it's no good. And then this fish should smell good, not you know too heavily fishy. And that's the shopping tips you know for the fish for you. Okay, now the fish provides a lot of the essential amino acids and a small amount of this connective tissue uh, more than the you know the red meat okay now this makes it very easily digestible and uh, it's a good diet for people who have some digestive problem now we are going to uh, walk on this walk on this uh, little fish right here now this one is roughly about two pound size if you don't have rock cod, you can use some, some other thing, you know, no problem. All right? Now, because it's so big, you look at this, you buy the fish, you know, you get them to scale. Now, the way to scale, which I have done already, because it, otherwise it will make a lot of a mess. So you just get the cleaver and you go this way, and, you know, uh, against the direction of the scale. Then you lift them all up, you know, just like your shaver, you know, sh lift them all up, and then that's the way to go. Then when it comes to the tail, we don't need that much tail to tell. So we cut it all. Ah, boy, there you are. And then you see the fish. Now because it's very thick. So one suggestion I make is this. You get your knife here and then make some score. So that when you cook it, so it doesn't take long to cook. You know, right? Now so you can score it that way. And then this way, you know, whatever you want. Okay, now then go to the other side. Do the same thing. Okay, you see the fish is very fresh. Uh -huh. Now, talking about Singapore, I was told by a friend of mine, he said, you know, you can sing, but if you sing very poorly, becomes Singapore. <laughs> Good. Now, next time, when you sing well, you can forget about Singapore. So, cut all those things right here. Then, what you do is uh, sprinkle it with some salt. Okay, sprinkle the, the fish with some salt inside and outside. Oh boy, it's all cleaned up already. So it's so nice. Okay, a little bit. Then you get a little walk cover. Walk cover right here. That's what I do. Put it there and then put some flour. Flour, right. Spring with flowers. There you are. You just make it there and then just cook this. Ooh, fish in about three minutes. That's all you have to do, in the hot oil, of course. All right? Now, because I have scored the fish, you know, that way, so it doesn't take long to cook. If you didn't score, then you'll be in trouble. Because for every inch thickness of fish, it will take you five minutes to cook. See, I cut it off. So that is one way to speed up our walking, walking technique. Now, then you get a walk full of oil. Make sure the oil is hot. That's all. Okay, now. How do you know it's hot? Put your Chinese thermometer. Thermometer. Okay, thermometer. Now, when you see bubble around, then it's ready. Now, the bubble beginning to form. It's not quite formed yet. Okay, but that's all right. We can just go in and dig in. And then get it going. Okay, now. There's a, all right, there's a different way of doing it. One is just put it in the way it is. The other way, I'm going to cheat a little bit and make it faster by cutting the inside just like this huh? so that it would be cut it would be cooked faster you know than normal all right now cut it a little bit okay now just using your knife a little bit move it just cut it deep a little bit so that the oil can get in that's the whole idea now all right now break it up a little bit and then you put it in to this hot oil Oh, enjoy your turkey's bath.
There you are. And then you put it in. And then you just let it cook using a Chinese spatula. You know right here? See, look at that. Okay. And then away you go. <laughs> Wonderful. And then you just uh, turn it over if you want. Now see, it doesn't take long at all. See, the fish is halfway already. All right. And very simple. Just leave it alone and let it cook by itself. Now, there you are. Now, this part of the cooking can be done way ahead of time. You can do this, you know, uh, 10 minutes ahead of time or even half hour ahead of time and keep it warm in the oven after it is cooked. And then you can make your sauce, you know, later. All right? Now, we just let this thing going and away you go. Then we get our plate. We have to get our plate organized. Get a big one, you know, like that, huh? Because it's going to require that, you know, to get into this. Okay. Now, what do we do? Let me show you a little thing here. Let me get a tomato. Hmm. Yep. There you are. Get a tomato. And then show you how to make a, another fish out of this. Okay. All you have to do, just cut this in half. All right. Then get a little knife. Okay, get a little knife here and uh, go like this. Okay, moving along. Okay, just go like that and then you use your little knife and then go underneath the skin. Huh? Now there. Okay. Now if you keep on watching this show, you will see a lot of uh, fruit and vegetable carving. And that is important because we want to make the food look good. And uh, so that it would be good for you and also good for your guests. Now, okay, now you, up, after you finish the other side, you come to this side, and then away you go. You lift back all this skin right here. Okay, now there you are. Okay, all right. Now, then you just pull it back, and away you go. And all you have to do, if you have something, uh, just get the two pieces of this red cherry and a small piece of toothpick. Okay, now then watch this. All right, now just go like this. One. Oh. And then the other side, just like that. Now that becomes a little big eye goldfish, you know, from the tomato, just for you. Okay, then we put this thing here. Get our fish organized. And then we heat up a wok to make our cream sauce. To do the cream sauce is very simple. All you need just, well, I move this thing along. A little bit of the green onion, chopped green onion. Okay, now. And then ready to go. And then make sure you get a little bit of the ginger root. Okay, fuse very tiny pieces of that and then some of the cream of corn and then of course you need some uh, starch solution okay one tablespoonful of starch to one tablespoonful of water okay now that's all you need okay then away you go you're ready i'm ready then all you have to do now just heat up your wok and get one tablespoonful of oil here and then put all the ginger and the green onion and the, all the cream of corn right here and then get some salt that's all you need and then all you have to do now just get some water and then put this thing right here and the star solution okay now there there you have to do just bring it to a boil, and then you get your fish organized. Get your fish. Okay, get your fishing net, of course. And then lift up your fish. Ah, very easy. Yeah, there you go. Okay, then you walk over to the plate. Turn off the heat, and bring it off. Ah, see? Just walk it right off, You're right here. Okay, here's your fish. Whew. Right? And then all you have to do, just pour the cream corn sauce right on top of the fish and ready to serve.
When I come back, I will do the sweet and sour lamb just for you. So don't walk too far away, okay? Welcome back. There I am. I'm going to cook up a very fast dish, you know, using this uh, lamb chop. And I'm going to chop it up into small pieces. All right, right here. And away we go. And all you need just a little bit of salt. And then marinate it. And then put it in the hot oil. Okay. Now that will be done very easily. And then next, all you need just a little bit of this pineapple. And always a few slices of ginger whenever you cook lamb. And then you make your sauce. Okay. Now there you are. Ready. And then all you have to do now, just what do we do? I don't know. Never done this before, you know. And uh, get your lamb, you know, organized right here. If the hot oil, it takes only about two minutes. Okay, there you are. One tablespoonful of oil. And then you put all those pineapple, red pepper, ginger, you know, right in. And then you put half a small can of the tomato paste. That's all you have to do. And then add some water, right. Okay, wow, boy, this is interesting. And then one part of uh, vinegar. One part vinegar, I hope. And then the sugar, three parts. Okay, one, two, three. Ah, and then all you have to do now is get some of the star solution. Okay, where you are? Let's find out our solution. Okay, one tablespoonful to uh, one tablespoonful of water. Then you just bring this to a boil. No kidding. Now, then you just bring it to a boil, mix it up. Ah. There you are. Then what do we do? We get our this thing here, Chinese fishing net, of course. And then just bring all those uh, lamb out when this thing comes to a boil. You get your plate ready. And then you got your decoration ready. No kidding. Going like crazy. Right. Then all you have to do is just get all those lamb, put it in here, and mix it up. Okay, now ready. Oh, I'll just mix it up. Here you are, I made it. Sweet and sour lamb just for you. Here, rock cod with the cream sauce, you know, especially for you. And walk over here, that is the fastest dish I ever done. Sweet and sour lamb chop, just for you. I hope you like it. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Well, how do you like my fast cooking? Wonderful. Wonderful? Now, I'm sure you can handle this uh, lamb chop, you know, here. I hope you eat lamb. Do you? Yes, I do. Okay, now keep, oh, go ahead and eat something. And I'm going to read my Thank fortune you. cookie. You try it out now and see what happens. Okay, it says, oh, this is a long one. Oh, lao sui pat fu. Ooh, pat fu. Also, water in motion does not become stagnant nor does the hinge of a door get worm-eaten. So you move the door all the time, that means you're being used, it will be good. If you don't use it, it will get rusted. Why not? Just like the wall. Make sense? <laughs> How's that? How's the lamb? Very good. Very good? Very good. Would you like to try some fish? Sure. Yeah, huh? I understand you, do, you go skiing, huh? Yeah. What kind of skiing do you do? Downhill skiing. Downhill? Downhill skiing. I do uphill. Oh, do you? Yeah. Because I, in my work, I always go uphill. I see. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Skiing is good, good, good exercise, mm -hmm. just like walking. Good. Very you use good. a walk a lot? Mm-hmm. Use a walk a lot. Yeah. Okay, good. I hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and it's enjoy your fish and uh, sweet and sour lamb. Huh? And folks at home, boy, we've been having a lot of fun. See, I show you a quick dish to do the sweet and sour lamb. And I did it. And I even show you the carving in no time. So you just keep on watching and I'll keep on walking just for you. Bye-bye and see you next time. For today's fantastic recipes, please send a self-addressed stamp envelope to P.O. Box 3313, Vancouver, BC, Canada, V6B3Y3.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. In the Western world, people normally fold rice during the wedding. Wow, to me, walk and waste. Did you know that the rice provides most of the food for half of the world's population? In Asia, the word to eat means to eat rice. And they don't say hello, they say, have you eaten today? That means, have you eaten rice today? A lot of people love rice. For example, Gary Hart spent a lot of time with rice, and the name is Donna. <laughs> now, before I tempt your appetite with some tasty rice dishes, let me show you some popular dishes that are found in an unusual place in Singapore. Hey, looking for a nice place to eat and without spending a lot of money, right here in Singapore, there's a special place called the Newton Hawker Centre. This is a place where you, where you can have good selection of different food without spending a lot of money. Now, years ago, all these folks here, they used to sell their food on the cart without running water or electricity. But right now, the Singaporean government has improved everything, supplying them with electricity, water and food inspection. So the food is very safe to eat and everybody comes here, have a great time. And this is the place where you can eat day and night, have all kinds of fresh food and fresh vegetables. It's a lot of fun. The ancestors of these cooks are called hawkers because they wheel their cars through the streets of Singapore and hawking their food. These days, even though these cooks are still called hawkers, you will find them only in the big food center like this. Each store is an individual business. Almost every hawker has learned the trade from his parents. Each recipe is a carefully guarded secret passed down from generation to generation. Each hawker store has something different to offer. This place is good for someone who can't make up his mind. Every meal is exotic and requires different degrees of preparation. Store like this one offer this Asian delicacy. It's called satay. These are skewer pieces of chicken or beef grilled over hot coal. It's served with peanut sauce. It's delicious. These are not the miniature tin men from Richard of Oz. These are rice flour cakes. It's very inexpensive. For one dollar, you can get three. Normally, it is served with coconut and is a popular item for takeout. Unlike the food fairs in Western shopping malls, Hawker Center is like a circus here. Even at two o'clock in the morning, you will see lots of activities as hawkers walk around the clock, serving mouth-watering pieces of food for those who work late or just happen to be hanging around. At this center, you get entertainment as well. This is the fellow who is making the homemade bread, the Arabian style. This is the place where spice is the variety of life. You can have food like this, called the roti kani, a type of food that you will never forget. In America, the food fairs sure don't have the variety over here. Hawker centers are popular with everybody. All hawkers are licensed and must maintain good health standards. Dogs are not allowed here. The Americans are given for unclean stores. And when you get 12 pawns in one year, you lose your license. Obviously, judging from all these happy customers, there are a lot of clean hawker stores. Customers are allowed to sit anywhere you like. First, you must find a table with a number on it. When you see something you like, just tell the hawker and they will bring it to you. Don't come alone because you need someone to keep an eye on your table while you order the food. Otherwise, you end up starving for sure. See, it says, never walk alone. And now you know the exact meaning. And I'm going to show you a little apron here today and you give you a different meaning too. Just take a look, all right? Huh? there you are. Eat or walk out. 
and talking about rice earlier, do you know that a lot of people, they eat rice because it's easily digestible? And we eat rice a lot. Rice in the morning and rice in the afternoon and rice at night, all the time. And we have all forms of rice. Now, the one that you normally see are the grains of rice, short grain, long grain, converted rice, and things like that. But do you realize they also use rice to make noodles? That's why I'm going to show you in this show to how to, uh, to cook how to cook all this noodle, the rice noodle. And it's very interesting, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy that. And I'm going to cook it with beef. Ah, then, and also a little bit bean sprout and onion. And this is the most popular dishes in Singapore, and I'm sure you're going to like it. Today, I'm going to show you how to cook this dish with a small piece of cow right here, the beef, you know, right here. And then using it to cook with the rice noodle. See, everybody thinks that the rice only comes in grains. But if you make them into flours, rice flours, and make it into noodles like this, oh boy, you can really cook up a good dish. This is my favorite because there's no sauce and you can eat it outdoor, indoor, and in a rush, or for lunch, or take out, and it's always good to taste. And it's, it's the thing that you will have to use a wok to do it, because the ordinary frying pan will not be able to do this that well. Now, the rice noodle you can buy from the supermarket, you know, right here, and then uh, you use roughly about 10 ounces of that, and that's a lot. That's good to feed uh, a group of people of three to four. First of all, you make sure they are not stuck together and loosen them up so that they are not too uptight. See? <laughs> That's right. Loosen up the noodle. Then you can have a oodles of fun. Then the next thing you need is get some of this uh, green onion, cut it into the length of about one inch. One inch size. That's it. Now, then the, you need a little bit bean sprout right here and some uh, onion, shredded onion, and make sure you get some ginger slivers, okay? Cut it out. Now, how do you make uh, ginger sliver? Very simple. First of all, you make slices like that. And then from the slice, then you make to the sliver. Very simple. See, you will notice I use only one knife to do all the work. And this is the clever cleaver. Actually, the most important part of the tool in a Chinese cooking is not the wok, it's the, it's the cleaver. The cleaver helps you to prepare everything. Okay, now this is a small piece of beef, just to show you how economical it is. This is roughly about five ounces, and that's good to feed four people. But if you have eight people, no problem! There, you cut it in half. <laughs> that's a way to stretch your budget. See, make sure you slice it across the grain. That's all you have to do. Okay. Now, any kind of beef will be fine, and you don't need the expensive beef to do this. Now, slice it across the grain. Away you go, and then keep going. Yeah, there you are. Now, very simple and straightforward. And this part can be prepared ahead of time, too. You can cut this and then marinate it ahead of time. Now, all right. Now, just cut it like that. And get a, a little bowl. Okay. And pick it up, put it in here, and then you marinate your beef a little bit by putting in one teaspoonful of your starch, one the powder, and a little bit of the light soy sauce, one teaspoonful of light. Okay, then a little bit of the pepper and a few drops of sesame seed oil. Now you do this ahead of time and marinate it for a few minutes before you start cooking. Then you turn on your stove. We are ready. Okay. Now it takes a little while to heat up your wok, particularly when you use the electric wok or electric stove. See, Chinese cooking, you should use a high heat. That's why I don't use the electric wok at all because they are just too slow, you know, to do the cooking. All right, I normally use the gas with the wok. And then I have the instant high heat. That's the reason why I want to use the gas. But if you have uh, just an electric stove, no problem. 
to make sure you get a little stand so that your walk can sit still as steady as a walk. And otherwise, you have a walk and roll. Okay. Now, when the walk is hot, then you put three tablespoonful. One, two, three. Three tablespoonful of oil. Now, okay, so make sure you bring it hot. You know, there you are, away you go. And then you use about half teaspoonful of minced garlic. And then you can put all the beef in. Okay, now put all the beef. But make sure it is hot. Okay, the oil is hot. Now see, when it's hot, then the meat will not get stuck to the bottom of the wok. That's all you have to do. Then, once they change color, then you put all the bean sprout, green onion, and onion, and sliver ginger root. Now, put it in there. Okay, then you put all the noodle, all the rice noodle. Okay, now let it cook. And then just keep on doing this. Aha, uh -huh. get a good size round wok, and then you can toss it around, you know, okay? Now, just go like this. And let this thing cook. Now, break it up. See? Now, just go and keep turning. And keep turning. Keep turning, all those things. And then sprinkle a little bit of Chinese cooking wine. A little bit will be fine. And a little bit, two tablespoonful of dark soy sauce. Now, this is the very few time I use dark soy sauce so that you can see that the color is there. And then put a little bit, one teaspoonful of sugar. Okay, now there we go. Then you just keep on turning. If you just have the spatula. Okay, now just keep on turning this. And then until all the noodles are cooked. Now in a real professional Chinese restaurant, we normally would toss this thing around, you know, like this. So that all the noodles will not get burned. Yet it is cooked, you know, evenly and uh, nicely. Okay, now just go like this and using the high heat. Now, in the restaurant, normally I have about 20, more than 20 different jets of fire coming down to the bottom of the wall. That is a tremendous amount of heat. But here, in a home cooking, you have less, and then you can just use this, you know, just toss it around, no problem. Okay, there you are. Then all you have to do now, just get a plate, and then put it right there. Okay. And... Just get your noodle out, give it a couple toss, and then you're ready. Now, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, I'm going to show you a different kind of noodle, and you're going to enjoy it. Don't walk away. I'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, there you are. I am going to show you something very exciting uh, using this uh, little uh, tomato. Eh? Now, let's show you something that uh, a lot of people always think that carving is very difficult. You know, it's not. Now, just all you have to do is just get a knife like this or use a uh, little paring knife and me make the V cut. Just go back and forth like this. Now, just keep going until you see the previous cut. Okay. Now, then after you finish, now you're there, and all you have to do is just put a little, little red cherry there, and now away you go. Now, there's one way. Another way is that you can scoop up all the content from here, and then use it to hold the sauce. And you don't have to do dishes. After people eating, you can hold the plum sauce or whatever the sauce that you have, you know, put it right there. Instant, you know, a, a saw dish, sauce dish for you and uh, what a deal from one little tomato. I hope you enjoy this. Huh? <laughs> right, now the next dish I've been doing is very exciting. It is called uh, noodle again. This is not made with rice, it's made with wheat flour. This is the egg noodle that you normally see from your, from the restaurant, you know, and, uh, but we have a rice noodle too. This is the one that's more popular in North America. And uh, I'm going to be using it to cook with some beef and pineapple and sweet and sour. A lot of people like sweet and sour, so I, I developed this recipe to, uh, to entertain you. Now, all you need is, again, two tablespoonful of oil. Make sure the oil is hot, all right, and the water is hot. Now, it's very important that you make sure the water is hot before you put the oil in. Because if the water is not hot, you put the oil in, it will take a long time to heat up the oil. So, hot water, and then the oil. And then hot oil, and then put in the food. Then the food will never get stuck. And you will never get stuck too. Okay, now, just let it cook. Now, we normally would like to brown the noodle a little bit so that the egg flavor of the noodle can be brought out. To some people, they might take this as a burning, but that's not, you know, we don't burn our noodle. We just uh, brown it. There's a big difference because burning is turning black. Brown is to bring out a nice flavor of the noodle, okay? Okay, just flip it, and then away you go. The other side will be there. And then while you're waiting, you get your beef, you know, ready and then marinate it with some of the starch one for you here and one for you there to make our sweet and sour sauce now okay now there you are it's almost ready okay and then you are just turn it and then away you go again just let it cook you know you can see it's nice and brown okay nice and brown and on the side and then not burn okay now one more flip then we are ready okay all right and then we just get this thing out to a plate. Boy, very easy. Now, nothing to it at all. And all you have to do now, just get the noodle out of this thing here. Okay. Now, then you're ready. Then just heat up the wok. And then two tablespoonful of oil again. One, and then two. And get a little bit of the minced garlic. Okay. Minced garlic half teaspoonful. And then for your beef, it should be marinated with a little bit light soy sauce. And then, and the starch. Okay, now once it comes to boil, oh, like this, Ooh. just let it cook. Cook it until it change color. Then you get your sauce ready. Okay, put about one tablespoonful of your starch there. And then add water, about half a cup. And then what happens? You need some vinegar. One teaspoonful of vinegar. And then three teaspoonful of your sugar. One, two, three. Ha! Ah. Very easy. Okay. Now, then you can have a little bit of this uh, thing here. The pineapple, green and red pepper, and the tomato. Put it together. Okay. And then you put a little bit of salt. And then all the sauce. 
right in here. Okay, now bring it to a boil and boil, boil. That would make a nice sauce. Nice sauce. Hey, and then all you have to do, just sprinkle some sesame seed oil. Then you're ready. Okay, now all you have to do now, just get this thing and get this thing ready. Oh, and then uh, and pour the sauce right on top of the noodle. Then you are going to eat. I am going to share this with my guests. And believe me, it's going to be a lot of fun. So don't stay away too far. I'll be right back. Welcome back. That's good. Wow. I was really walking fast. And there you are, look at this, donut rice. Oh, pardon me, it's not donut rice. <laughs> this is the rice with the beef, and I'm specially made for you. And walking over there, oh, very colorful. It's called sweet and sour beef chow mein. Specially for you, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, Tommy, how are you? Hi, Mr. Yang. Fine, See, so far so good. Yes. Did, did you enjoy my cooking? Yes, I do. I hope you like noodle. I love noodles. Thanks. Noodle? Mm -hmm. How do you eat with noodle normally? With a fork. With a fork? Yes. Well, today you are into it, my friend. Okay, what do you want to take in with your noodle? No fork? Huh? No fork. There you are. Now, use my cheating stick. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Now, when you use this, there's a technique. Do not try to use both. Just use one. See? Oh, thank you. See how easy it is? Mm. Nothing to it. They put it in the mouth. That's the place to be. Mm. Now, how's that good? Delicious. Yeah? Do you have a wok at home? No, I don't, but I'm about to get one. Okay, you're, you're, you're putting it on the list for your Santa Claus. That's right. Huh? You better be good. Now, for this uh, sweet and sour noodle, it's interesting. Now, okay, it's a different flavor altogether. Now, I have to help you a bit. Now, you, okay, now then just get this. And then get some of this pineapple. Oh, this is delicious. And the beef. Oh, you will love it. This is the first time I ever cooked this dish, as is a matter it? of fact. Never done that before. No? Honestly, because I just made it up. See, people like sweet and sour. People like noodle. Why not put them together? And sweet and sour noodle. So, oodles of a problem. Okay, go ahead and try it now. <laughs> That's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, yeah, you're doing great. Okay, now. Tastes good? Mm. Which one do you prefer, the rice or the wheat flour? Both. Both. Mm. <laughs> Gee, you're very humble, aren't you? <laughs> Let me uh, read the fortune cookie for you. You go ahead and keep on eating, uh, eating, and I'm keep on reading. Ah, okay. Now he said, "Tok su yau guai hui sam." That means it's uh, when you are in the pursuit of knowledge, it is best to be open-minded. That means you should learn with open mind and don't have a one tunnel vision. Mm. Then you can learn more. Make sense to you, folks? Go ahead and keep on enjoying it, Tom. Thank you. All right. Now, it's very nice to have you, and I hope you enjoy and watching the show. Thank you for and having me. And learn more. Okay. And folks at home, it's nice to have, to have you too. And I make sure you keep on watching so that I can keep on walking. And see you next time. Bye. <laughs>